So I'm going to share with you an excerpt from one of my favorite devotion books. It is Holy Everything, and it's written by Emily Carson, who happens to be on staff of the bishop here in our southeastern Minnesota Synod. Emily is a very talented woman, and um, just to do a little plug here, that if you're looking for a Christmas gift for someone, this book is a phenomenal choice. It really, it offers a very interesting perspective, and Last night when I was, right after we'd made the decision to not meet in person, I was just thumbing through her book and, and oftentimes when I am looking for maybe some direction or I have some question, I'll just take my Bible and I'll let it fall open to a particular page and that's what I did with this. I just let my book fall down and it opened to Holy Truths. And so I'm gonna share that with you today. And I think it's very fitting along with our our gospel reading and just some of the events of the world right now. So, holy truths. At some point along the way, I unknowingly signed up for a lifelong course in holy truths. These informal classes most often take place where the sky serves as the only roof. God teaches these classes most often when I'm not looking. The lessons show up like shooting stars unpredictable and swift. They are moments that can't be saved, but only savored. On a recent afternoon at Gooseberry Falls along the north shore of Lake Superior, two flowers seemed to call out and say, look over here, listen, learn. Does every flower come with some lesson? Does nature conspire together to reach human beings' holy truths? Maybe so, but Probably not. Nature is too wise for conspiracies. Creation continues with or without our observations and speculations. The holy truths discovered outdoors seem most profound precisely because plants, trees, and animals are unrehearsed. They are honest and unfiltered. At Gooseberry Falls, the yellow flower caught my attention first. She, should, she stood straight up to the sky. There were no other flowers in her midst. At some point this spring, she took root in an unlikely spot, surrounded by tall pine trees, digesting most of her light. But the lack of sunshine didn't stop this little flower. She stretched and stretched until she found a spot where the sun's rays broke through the trees. In the vivid... It was a vivid reminder to me of the reality, and sometimes we have to stretch a lot further than we'd prefer to stretch. Situations arise that leave us in the shade, and we have, we have to find another way to get a regular dose of light and hope. There are occasions in which we have to emotionally or physically push ourselves until, even, until we're even a little bit sore, but it's worth it. Because in the end, we are able to stand tall and soak in those longed for rays of encouragement. Next was the purple flower residing near the falls. I believe it was a violet, but I wouldn't call my identification skills particularly strong. If it was a violet, this one was absolutely not the shrinking variety. He was brave. Of all the places for a violet to grow, this particular specimen chose to cling sideways from a small crevice on a rock. To a novice observer like myself, their growing conditions seem less than ideal. What about good soil? About enough light? Could this little violet receive all it needed and the nourishment from this side of the rock? Apparently, yes, as this precious purple plant was making the best of it and blooming where he was planted. I have an affinity for the word bloom. It's plastered in my bedroom on the wall as removable word art. There are calendars and photo frames sporting the word as well. I know the saying is so familiar it's cliche, but bloom where you're planted. But it makes sense. In our lives, sometimes we, like the violet at Gooseberry Falls, have to bloom where we are planted. The situations we find ourselves may not be perfect, but we can seek out and, learn and lean on the support of others. 
We can pursue opportunities to nourish our spirits. And even when it's like it feels unlikely, we can continue to grow. A vacation hike at Gooseberry Falls ended up providing the space for a sacred classroom. What a gift it is to worship a God who comes to us in such, in such a multitude of ways. I think that it connects nicely, Emily's devotion collects nicely, connects nicely to our scripture today. I just keep thinking of the bridegroom and the bridesmaids, some the wise who are prepared and they have the oil or if we relate it back to Emily's story, all of the right conditions, the soil, they're, they're ready, they are set up for success. And then the foolish who don't have the, the oil. And yet both, God desires for both to bloom and to grow. And the light that's provided from that oil lamp is the light of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to remind you of the words that we hear at baptism and also the words that Jesus preached at the Sermon of the Mount. 